Today, I'm here to tell you about the single biggest deception in the history of dieting and the main reason for the ruination of the keto diet. A financial, medical, and mathematical fraud so simple, so elegant, it makes the Enron guys look like they were running a lemonade stand. It allows multinational corporations to profit billions while keeping you fat, addicted, confused, and more often than not, searching for a bathroom. It's the ultimate nutritional myth known as net carbs. Who invented this term and why? To understand this multi-billion dollar shell game, we have to go back to the source, a well-meaning doctor whose good idea was corrupted faster than a politician at a fundraiser. This is corruption of epic proportions, something we have got to talk about right here on the Carnivore Science Channel. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Liz. I'm a medical technologist and pharmaceutical chemist with over 30 years of experience in the pharmaceutical and medical industry. I was a perfectly sane individual working in a completely insane medical machine, otherwise known as a medical industrial complex. Then one day I kicked open my pod and I had my red pill moment when I realized that the machine was powered by lies. I went on the carnivore diet back in November of 2022 which apparently makes me a crazy person to all my friends and family. But glass half full, at least I'm not chemically manipulated anymore. Hmm. Okay, back to this whole net carbs BS. Take a look at this bagel, for instance. I mean, it has 18 grams of total carbohydrates. I mean, that's a lot. For perspective, take a look at this North Pole Nutty Buddy Bar. I mean, it has six grams less than that, and it's a dessert. And at least the package is honest. I mean, look at the bagel package. It says it has two net carbs, okay, whatever that is. I mean, that number's more fabricated than the fighting on a Real Housewives reunion special. I mean, this is a gimmick that's not recognized by the FDA, the USDA, the American Diabetes Association. It's 100% made up. It's the equivalent of counting calories and thoughts. I mean, come on. To understand the origins of this whole net carb thing, you have to go back to the 1970s to Dr. Robert Atkins. He was an actual physician and he was a visionary and clearly somebody who was tired of eating salads. But he popularized the concept that not all carbohydrates were created equal. His core observation was simple and correct. Fiber and certain components are not fully digested and absorbed as glucose. His assertion was valid. Fiber is a non-digestible polysaccharide. It hits your stomach and moves through your small intestine and acts more like bulk, or frankly, a plumbing brush, not really a usable fuel source. So the original idea was to subtract the fiber because it doesn't immediately send your blood sugar into a panic, which is fair enough. Then enter the corporation to come and screw everything up. It was then that Atkins Nutritionals Incorporated got involved. They took the scientific concept that he came up with and they commercialized it into a trademarked loophole. It was brilliant marketing. It gave people permission to look at a label, do a little math, and feel like they'd crack the code. A two-carb cookie? I'm a genius. No, actually, you're a victim of clever marketing. If the scam had only involved fiber, it would mostly just be an oversimplification. But the real deception, the billion dollar part, happened when they actually introduced the second element of the net carb equation, sugar alcohols. Now, oddly enough, sugar alcohols are neither sugar nor alcohol, but are a type of carbohydrate with a chemical structure similar to sugar. I know, dumb, but remember, nutritional science is actually an oxymoron. But anyway, this is where big food grabbed the formula and ran with it. These sugar alcohols with names like erythritol, xylitol, and mannitol, like I said, not sugars, but chemical cousins to sugar. Their structure contains hydroxyl groups like sugar, but they've been twisted just enough so your poor overworked human enzymes can't quite metabolize them in the small intestine. 
Now pay attention because this is the difference between a health hack and a stomach ache. Not all sugar alcohols are created equal. Erythritol has a glycemic index of nearly zero. It's mostly excreted in the urine. It's one of the few that mostly behaves as advertised, but the vast majority of cheap low-carb products use maltitol. Why? Because it's cheap? Now, maltitol is about 50 to 75% as sweet as sugar, but it has a glycemic index of 35 to 52. It absolutely causes a blood glucose spike. And in a metabolically compromised individual, that's not a low carb snack, that's a lie in a wrapper. But because it's technically a sugar alcohol, Big Food throws it on the label and says subtract half of those grams. Enjoy your three net carb chocolate explosion. They're counting on you not knowing the difference between a good sugar alcohol and a gastrointestinal disaster. And even the fiber calculation is sketchy. Most processed products have inulin or soluble corn fiber, cheap isolated fibers. These ferment rapidly in the gut, causing significant digestive distress, bloating, gas, you name it. The fiber in a whole vegetable behaves vastly different than a purified powder dumped into a shake. It's an oversimplification designed to reach a low number. It's kind of like saying that a Ford Pinto and a Porsche 911 are both cars. Sure, they both have wheels, but I know which one I trust not to explode, you know? So now we have a formula. Total carbs minus ingredients that are either imperfectly subtracted or are outright lying about their metabolic impact. The result? A tiny, adorable, entirely meaningless net carb number. Now let's see how Big Food took this beautiful chemical curiosity and used it to fleece the public for billions. Once net carbs became popular, it was a gold rush. Food companies understood the psychological power of this term. It allowed them to sell you a highly processed, chemically engineered product, a cookie, a candy bar, a bread, and tell you that it's diet friendly. They're selling you permission to cheat. But how can they get away with this, you might ask? Well, it's because there's no legal definition. The FDA does not recognize this term at all. The American Diabetes Association goes, yeah, maybe don't use that, kind of dismissively. Um, it's not measured or audited by any governmental agency. It's a piece of marketing copy designed by people who own yachts, not by people who care about good nutrition or better health. By selling you these misleading low-carb snacks, they keep you addicted to sweet flavors, they keep your insulin resistance high, and they keep your inflammatory markers elevated. And who profits from this chronic disease? The pharmaceutical and medical industries that I came from. It's a revolving door. They sell you the food that make you sick, and then they sell you the drug to manage the sickness caused by the food they sold you. It's a genius. Evil but genius nonetheless. So now that we know that the whole net carb thing is complete bullshit, what do we do with all these food labels? Well, first of all, the only carb info that means anything on there is the total carbs, period. And look at your actual ingredients list. If you see things like seed oils, refined flours, or maltitol, put it back. Or better yet, light it on fire. No, don't light it on fire, okay? I'm just being hyperbolic. You know, the only way to win a rigged game is not to play. When it comes to diets, you can't chemically manipulate whole foods. So my recommendation is if it's processed and it has a list of ingredients, stay away from it. I ate trash for most of my life. And then later I found the low carb diets, which were very helpful at first, you know, keto, but then I went into the ditch with the net carb scam. I started eating cookies and pies and all the things that, you know, I knew couldn't be good. I read the ingredients. I'm a chemist. I understand what these things are, but 
that lie on the front of that package was like a warm blanket that you can just wrap yourself up in. Permission to cheat. That is what it is. And that is the primary reason that most people just go in the ditch when they go keto. Not all of them, but most people who start keto just, they can't resist that loaf of bread that says two carbs, two net carbs. It'll be good. It's keto bread. Everything's keto this and keto that. And it's all about a little bit of net carbs. It's all, you don't have to worry. You can have sandwiches. You can have all these things. It sounds too good to be true because it is. It does not work that way. Carbs are carbs. Sure, there's some truth to how fiber is digested, etc. But it doesn't work the way that they presented it. And I don't honestly think that Dr. Atkins meant for all of this to happen, but it did. Because once, you know, the corporations get a hold of it, they're going to run with it and they're going to make as much as they can. Now, I think, I'm not sure, but I think the net carb thing is kind of dying off the vine here. I, I don't see it as often as I used to, but I don't know. Who knows? Don't fall for it. If you're thinking about grabbing that pack of bread that says keto on it, stay away from it. It's not good for you. It's really not good for you. And it's not going to lead to weight loss if that's what you're looking for. It doesn't really work. Do you actually purchase any of these products that have low net carbs? Did you ever fall for it? Did you go keto and then go crazy with the cookies and the pies and the Atkins bars and everything else? Let me know in the comments section what you have experienced when it comes to this whole net carb scam. And if you like the video, if you could hit the like button, I would really appreciate it. It helps the channel a lot. And if you want to subscribe, that would be great. And hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any upcoming videos and live streams. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.